Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtide Media, and today we've got another installment of Hot Takes, where I went on and asked for your hot takes, uh, your spicy opinions on things, and we're going to talk about them right now. I feel like Monster Cat should upload all the tracks from a project onto their channel, whether it's an EP or an album, and then they went on to kind of describe how it's been inconsistent in the past, where some albums have got full mixes and some haven't, and uh, yeah, I I understand the inconsistency and the sentiment that Monster Cat is like favoring, quote unquote some albums over others but I think it's just a non-factor to me I think YouTube is such I don't want to say dead um, but YouTube is just not the primary listening platform anymore for a majority of people um, it is the streaming platforms like Spotify or Apple Music and so I just don't really care a ton honestly about what and what doesn't get released on YouTube because that's frankly where 95% of people aren't going to let's sort of like only 5% of people are going to watch and listen to the music. So I don't, I don't really care. I hate fake out drops. You know, when it builds up and doesn't actually get to, into the drop straight away for a few measures. I hate that. And I hate that it's become a normal thing in modern dubstep and bass house today. Um, I mean, I understand the sentiment behind this, that you want to feel like you've constantly, like, you know what's happening, but I think that's part of the joy of electronic music to some extent, and there's a lot of times where I've reacted to stuff, and I'm like, oh, oh and then I'll be like, huh, and then it, like, doesn't come, and I'm like, ah, and then... So I get it. I think it's, I do think it's overdone. I will say that. I, I I understand the kind of fun to a fake out drop and how those can be a, a more like enjoyable, yeah, just fun, quirky thing to a song to add. But I do think that it's, it's happening time and time and time and time again. And it really only is that prevalent in the EDM space. Um, I don't really know any other genre that has like a fake out chorus. Like there's pre-choruses, but EDM has that too. And then um, it just kind of, yeah, I I understand the sentiment, but I think they're fun for the most part. You can't hate on it too much. Hardstyle songs contain little to no actual melodies, and the main appeal of the genre is an entrancing bass cadence akin to being punched repeatedly by the vibrations from your subwoofers. There's no real artistry with the hardstyle, just a competition to see who can make the punchier drops. Um, for the most part, I am I I agree. That being said, if you listen to hardstyle or I would say like happy hardcore or hard dance um, from like a uh, <laughs> like a stone bank compo uh, like compared to like some other hardstyle like stone bank there, there's elements to it there there's more to it there is a sense of artistry to the genre there's a sense of artistry to all genres for the most part unless they're a little bit more meme like uh, extra tone or something like that but um, that being said I, I do agree to some extent hard dance is just and hardstyle is 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 meant for a different purpose. Purpose. It's not meant to invoke deep emotion and feeling and 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 or comfort and or like to, to make you really feel something. It's a lot of time it just is to get that boom 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 boom. It just is to get that going. And I get it. I can't blame the genre for it. I I do think there's a way to make things better and a way to make things not feel like such a I don't know, cop out sometimes, but um, it is what the genre is. It's probably the closest of any like mainstream EDM genre to being uh, more like meme or unserious where it really is. It's intended purpose isn't to amaze. It is for a pure like adrenaline type feeling um, that for the most part goes hard in the festivals and clubs. Like you don't really, <laughs> it, it's not common for me at least to be like, <laughs> putting on headphones, listening at home and being like, yes. And inside it's like, dung, 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 dung. Like, I'm just like, yeah. So I get it. Hard style is just meant to be different. All EDM genres become better when you add melodic to them. What would you think about melodic, melodic dubstep? Uh, no, but seriously, uh, I like I disagree with us completely, uh, almost to the same vein of the hard style comment where um, melodic, when you put melodic in front of something, it, it turns it into a different type of song. It turns it into something where the purpose is different than what it was originally intended to be, I'll say. So I think house is a great example for this. Um, I really love house music in general. And, and if we're going to talk like house in general, I would say progressive house is kind of the norm here um, for house. And uh, when you when you have melodic house, 
I don't really love Melodic House a ton. I think Melodic makes it a little bit more boring, a little bit more reserved, and I like the big kind of sweeping movements that typically come with a progressive house song. And so um, I understand that for the most part, though. Like, I, I get the idea of, like, dubstep, of, like, dubstep versus melodic dubstep. Even then, I like I like a crunchier, heavier dubstep than I do a uh, melodic dubstep because I think melodic dubstep is stale right now. I think there's only so far you can take a genre by adding melodic on top of it, like melodic techno, melodic D&B. Like, there's only so far within that realm of sound that you can make it without turning into a completely different genre. And then at that point, it's just like the subsection, an adjacent genre that um, isn't uh, overly unique over time. It gets super saturated, uh, the sound. So um, I hard disagree with this. Trivecta is one of the best EDM artists in the game right now. He's pushing his sound to new heights with the songs from his upcoming album, with some of his most recent songs and IDs dabbling in numerous non-EDM and EDM genres alike. His writing is excellent, his production is polished, his ideas are incredibly innovative, and he is the atlas of melodic bass right now, pushing the genre to new places I could only dream of. Wow, that is a uh, big hard-on for Trivecta, I will say. Um, but no, I, I actually do kind of understand it, and I do generally agree with the fact that Trivecta's doing some good stuff right now. Uh, I've been pretty critical of Trivecta's like, last, I would say, five, six years, especially with the Way Back album, and uh, I just thought it was getting pretty stale. But um, these new singles coming out from Trivecta, if you have not been paying attention or listening, um, are quite fantastic, and they really do, like, this comment is pretty pretty right like um he's kind of pushing some melodic boundaries and and showing the world the industry that uh melodic dubstep in particular um and adjacent genres don't have to be so stale uh, that there can be a lot more creativity that's infused to these tracks and i think um trifecta is doing a great job of that and i'm really excited to see where this album pops up in the end um hopefully i won't have to take my words back on this and there's uh it's more generic in the end but uh right now i'm i'm, I'm feeling it i'm genuinely loving what trifecta is doing so nice big room might be one of the most overhated edm genres when it's done right it's uplifting anthemic and generally fun to dance to shame that most people compare big room with bad genres like slap house um yeah like sort of i think this goes back again to the hard style conversation where big room and hard style are kind of in the same tier for me where you're really like yes there are these euphoric anthemic moments in big room house but for the most part uh, it is just uh, to get you going. Like, it is just a, like, it is just like, yeah, party, I love this. Like, it, it, it is that. And so um, I, <laughs> I I do think Slap House isn't great, and I think it's really hard to do Slap House well. Um, but Big Room, for the most part, is meant to be played in the big clubs and festivals, and that inherently means the songs are meant to have more commercial mass appeal and meant to um, be played in a certain context. The, the inherent idea of big room, of the idea that it's meant to be played in a big room, means that you are producing this song for a different audience than you would be listening to it by yourself in front of a computer or in the car. Like... That's the idea of Big Room. And so uh, I, I think Big Room can be done quite well. I think more so than Hardstyle. Typically, it has been in the past. And so um, I like generally agree. I do think it's overhated. But I think it's like it's like equally hated that it should be, if that makes sense. Like, I think there's a decent amount of like, hey, this is kind of just generic, big, like big sounding slop sometimes. Um, and sometimes it can be good. So I think it is generally um, well uh, <laughs> thought about in the in the spaces, at least the communities I'm a part of. Alan Walker being a Monster Cat is a waste of release slots and a giant insult to almost every other Monster Cat artist that actually puts work into their music. Okay, there is a lot going on here. Um, we're going to kind of skip past the fact that um, I guess you think Alan Walker puts no effort into their music um, because I'm sure Alan Walker puts lots of effort into their music. I'm, I'm sure this stems from the idea that there's a lot of writers on the Alan Walker tracks. Um, and Alan Walker kind of walks this weird line in the EDM world where he isn't this like mega superstar that's super popular to the like pop audiences. Like it's not a name that your parents or siblings are really going to know. Um, but they're also like big in the EDM space. 
uh, to the point where they have multiple writers for a lot of different tracks and they're doing collaborations with Joe Jonas and Julia Michaels and um, part of big game sponsorships and stuff like that. And so it's, it's he's this weird in between line, like a, almost like a B list celebrity in the EDM space where you're not quite like a, a Steve Aoki or a Skrillex. And um, you're also not like this small, like intimate, more niche creator. And so I, yeah, I, 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 I would, first of all, hard disagree. I don't think Alan Walker is, uh, is at all taking up a release spot from other artists that put time and effort into that. I think that is just, um, ignorance, I think more so than anything, uh, in terms of how you feel about a certain artist, because everyone's got their own opinions on, on things. And, um, I, I think if you were to show this comment to uh, monster cat, uh, the community of the past, like 2014, 2013, 15, like, um, people are going to downvote you to hell because they're like, they want Alan Walker on Monster Cat. And so um, I honestly, like all things considered, uh, don't, didn't mind the Alan Walker tracks. I think there were some good ones. I think there were some male ones. Um, but for the most part, um, there's no way he's like taking up release spots from other artists. That's no, that's 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 crazy. The term golden era, which only refers to 2010, 2015, well, that's debatable, uh, is overrated when you know masterpieces like Children and On the Move or Saving Light and Somebody Loves You existed. Um, this is kind of just a non-argument, I will say. This is pretty much a non-argument where you can say, oh, this isn't, this era isn't the over, isn't the best era because this good song was released outside of this time frame. I, I think you're misunderstanding the term golden era. There are a ton of fantastic songs that have come out in, let's say, the last four years individually, um, just as a random example. And you can't say that just because this great song came out this year that the past wasn't the golden era. That's that's not how things work. That's not how a golden... The, the, the last word of that, era, it's a time frame in which there was consistently good and fantastic releases. And for me, I personally think that was, I would say, 2012 to 2016, maybe 2015 era. I would, no, maybe 2016, where we were in a true golden era of EDM, where it exploded in the commercial scene and was became really popular. And you had big artists like, I would say, LMFAO that's doing this like big poppy kind of dance electronic music, but also like the rise of like Monster Cat at this time or the rise of NCS and Disciple. And you've got um, these labels that are really starting to gain ground in the space. And so um, I think the golden era of, of EDM specifically is sort of back then. That's where things kind of um, came to a culmination. And I think we're in a different era now. I don't know what it is necessarily today, but um, yeah, you got to remember that just because there's good songs that release every year, it's not like we're not never had a golden era or a silver era or something like that. But um, yeah, so it's, you got to remember era, era.